All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're giving like a little bit of a masterclass about growing figs in a greenhouse. And as you can see here behind me, I'm in this commercial space, this commercial sized greenhouse that uh, a friend of mine, local farmer, his name's Chip, shout out to SherwoodSeeds.com for anyone that's interested. He has allowed me to use this space and been able to, I've been able to really learn a little bit more about growing figs in a greenhouse setting. And I've been growing figs in a greenhouse setting for about five or six years in my own little space. That's a six by eight size. And most of the time we've been growing container trees in there, but we've also planted a number of in-ground trees that we've espied into a low cordon. I've also experimented really heavily with low tunnels. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about not just greenhouses, but low tunnels, high tunnels, basically growing figs at all underneath plastic. So let's start off by saying, what are the real benefits of growing fig trees under a greenhouse? The number one and most obvious benefit is actually getting them off to an early start to the season. The fig is a fall fruit, and typically in most climates will ripen anywhere from August all the way up until frost. And so we wanna make sure for those of us in later uh, or shorter season climates that don't have about 150, you need at least 150 to 180 frost-free days to reliably ripen a crop of figs off of an early to ripen variety. And so if you don't have that, you don't have that warmth in your summer, um, it's a great idea to use a greenhouse. And typically with a low tunnel, even a high tunnel, they're relatively easy to construct and even take down. Um, if you have something like this, this is the best of you could pretty much you can get. Um, and so in this space, I'm able to bring in my fig trees well before my last frost date, wake them up at an early date with this extra heat units that they get that warms up the soil, increases their metabolisms. And that's really the main indicator that tells them to wake up um, from dormancy. Once they wake up, then they're able to actually use those extra heat units and set the fruits at an earlier date. Uh, so then they can ripen not just, let's say, August 1st, which is typically my earliest date here in the Philadelphia area to ripen main crop, but now they're actually on a consistent basis for the last five, six, seven years, however long it's been, they're ripening by July 1st, which can be a very good, a very nice benefit, which leads us into the other benefit of growing fig trees um, under a greenhouse is that you can protect them from the rain. And so by having them uh, away from the rain in their final ripening stage, or really any moisture whatsoever, whether that's dew, just any excess moisture, um, you're able to actually have a higher fruit quality. Because a fig is very soft, it's a soft flesh fruit, they don't ship well, and typically to get the best quality, you have to let them ripen longer on the tree. Um, that's what makes growing figs at home so great. But even for a commercial grower who wants to sell their figs, and you live in a very rainy place, you really should be growing them under plastic of some kind to protect them from the rain because that rain, what it does is, not only does it ruin the quality, but you can also see a lot of spoilage and mold and fermentation, even an increase of fruit flies that way that might lay larva into the fruits and that's not good for sales. Um, but also what ends up happening, and this is kind of the mechanism here, is that the skin of the fig is rather susceptible to rain. Again, it's soft in that final ripening stage when it's swelling and getting softer and actually becoming sweet and edible. That's really when it is susceptible. It's, it's um, really susceptible, again, I just wanna make this clear, in that final ripening stage. It's not like if we had a really warm August or the perfect conditions in August that the figs would, because of that, be really good in September. It doesn't work like that. Um, Whenever, whatever the climate is, whatever the, the uh, temperature is outside and the humidity is outside, while they are ripening is the main indicator of how they will taste and what the quality will be. So it's really critical there to actually protect them from the rain if you're growing them in a humid place. And the reason for that I was getting to is that the skin easily absorbs water into the fruit. And so think of the skin like a waterproof jacket uh, or think of the skin like a different material of jacket, uh, something that could be uh, easily absorb water and hold onto that water, or you can have a waterproof jacket where the water hits the jacket and slides right off and actually doesn't absorb into the jacket and keeps you, the inside of the fig, let's say, nice and clean and nice and dry. So that's the 
the thing there is that every variety is different and some varieties are better at keeping that water out. But once the water gets in and you have enough rain, um, the bricks of the fruit, the, the soluble sugars goes down. And because the bricks is lower, you end up having a lower fruit quality. They taste worse and they can spoil and mold and ferment easier at that point. So those are the two big reasons. Now let's talk about heat now. Um, I'm gonna also talk about water. Um, we're also gonna touch on a little bit of the differences that I've seen so far in this video, actually about uh, some of the changes I've seen in this commercial greenhouse space. And so we've been growing figs in a very different environment than this, and we've learned some new things, and I wanna share those new things with you guys. Before I go on to the, some of the other things I wanna to touch on, hit that subscribe button for me right now. Hit that like button. If you're enjoying these videos, and also check out the blog. This all really helps me out, and definitely helps spread this awesome information to other people. So go to the description, check out the blog, figboss.com. I definitely appreciate it, guys. Uh, so the heat is the next important thing I wanna mention, in that if we have a lot of heat, which of course you're gonna have a lot of heat in a greenhouse setting like this, uh, that's obviously a big benefit, right? Getting them awake earlier, but you can't have too much heat. And so I would argue, keep the temperatures at night above 50 degrees Fahrenheit and keep them about at around 80 to 85 during the day. It's hard to keep them below and around 80 to 85 during the day. If the sun's shining like this and I don't open up a lot of the vents in here, we actually get too warm and it can get to 100 in here, 130 really actually very quickly. And so the figs can withstand that, but they certainly don't like it. And so when you have a soil temperature that is actually 90 to 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, something will happen called a summer dormancy. And so the fig trees will actually stop growing. Now you want them to maintain them at a 78 degree Fahrenheit temperature. That is the most optimal temperature for fig trees to grow and fruit and just in general, their metabolism performs the best at that point. Just like us as humans, we have a certain metabolism that we operate at. The fig trees are no different. So keeping it at 78 is gonna be the best uh, case scenario. Um, now, if you have also too much heat, and this is something I'm noticing again this year that I've noticed in the past, not only do they stop growing, but actually they'll fruit at an earlier date. And so that could be a good thing for some of you guys, right? Earlier fruits can typically be good, but they may fruit too early in the process of them waking up and putting out this new growth for the season. And so if you have too many fruits and not enough growth to support those fruits right away, if you don't have enough leaves that produce photosynthesis to support those fruits, you actually end up putting your tree into an energy deficit rather than an energy surplus. And we want our trees at this point, early in the season to continue growing. We want them to continue growing and to continue to fruit. So if we don't have, actually, if we have too much heat, they're gonna start fruiting too early. And what's gonna end up happening is they're gonna stop growing because there's not enough energy. And so the tree may have to go through this adjustment period and what you have to do actually to correct that deficit is actually remove some of the fruits there, even in the smaller state that they might be in, to allow the tree to be in that surplus again to continue growing. We want to have a, as much growth as possible before the summer. And so there's plenty of time here in my climate to allow these trees to continue to grow before it gets too hot. Once it gets too hot, as I mentioned, the fruits are already probably on the branches. They've already set their fruits, and then at that point, the trees will stop growing, which is fine. We want that. We need them to lignify in time for the, the winter time. So we do want them to stop growing for most of us, and naturally, most of our trees will stop growing. Um, and so in any case, the heat can be a bad thing if you have too much of it. Now, we do want a lot of heat early in the season because we want to have enough heat units to actually set the fruit buds. And so this is critical because there's two components to this. We want to actually be able to set the fruit buds here on the new branches, but we also want to have enough heat units to continue throughout the season after they've already set so that they will ripen at a reasonable time. And this is really well illustrated by people who live in the United Kingdom or the Pacific Northwest who have a very mild climate. They typically have a warmer and earlier spring than I do. And so here in the Philadelphia area, 
Our last frost date, again, as I said, is May 1st, but some of you guys in those places I mentioned may have a spring that starts April 1st. And so your fig trees start growing and start producing fruits and form their fruits at a much earlier date than me. But how is it that I'm actually able to ripen my fruits before people in those climates, or most of those people in those climates, that live in these mild places? It's because we need a different amount of heat units to actually set the fruits, and then we need a different amount of heat units to actually ripen the fruits. And depending on the amount of heat units we get after they set, will determine the amount of days it takes for them to actually ripen. Now, if we have the optimal conditions after they have set, the early varieties will take about 65, 75 days. The mid-season varieties will take about 90 days. And some of the late varieties might take a little bit longer. Uh, if we don't have optimal conditions, some of the varieties actually will not ripen at all, or they may actually even take 120 days, 110 days, uh, 150 days after they've already set the fruits on the branches. We want them to ripen roughly 65 to 90 days after they've set on the branches. And if you don't have that, you can count very easily, guys. Once they're, vis once they're visible here on the branches, and they form these very small figs that are pea-sized or even smaller than pea-sized, you can start counting from that date or at least make a note and then make a note of when they ripen. And you can count the number of days in between that and you can determine how good of a job that you did as a fig grower. And so that will determine basically if you need to increase the heat or maybe you need to lower the heat depending on where you guys are growing. Um, typically though, the more heat you have the earlier they're gonna ripen. Again, you can't have too much heat. So that's the, that's the, the uh, factor there about the heat. It's all about the soil temperatures, maintaining that at the right temperature. And those are kind of the ramifications of having too much heat or not enough heat. Um, so let's talk about water. Now, water obviously is something that's needed as the trees are in warmer temperatures and also as they wake up. Part of waking up is actually rehydrating the roots. So definitely give them some water if you're trying to wake them up. And then I would also focus on giving them a lot of water in this beginning stage of growth. As I said, we're trying to get them to grow as much as they can to set as many fruits that they can uh, before the summer comes in and things get too hot. Water does cool things down in the soil. So you definitely want to water for more than one reason, obviously, not just to give them water and that they need water, but to also make sure that they are staying a bit cooler and continuing the growth. Water is the on or off switch of growth. If you stop water, the tree will stop growing. Just like if you have too warm of temperatures, the tree will stop growing. If you have too cold of temperatures, the tree will stop growing. Um, but water really, once we're in that growing season, is when I control how much the trees grow and how much they don't grow. And so if you want them to grow, continue giving them water. If you don't want them to grow, lower that water, and again, into the summer as things get warmer, you have to give them more water depending on, because uh, it's gonna be warmer in general. So the warmer the soil is, the more evaporation there is, and also the more these trees uptake that water and transpirate that through their leaves. And so with more leaves, you need more water. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that you wanna give them a, enough water and a lot of water this time of the year before they actually set the fruit buds there on the branches. And so that's a key part of growing them in a greenhouse because it's kind of hard to overwater them in here. It's just too warm. If anything, we have to come in here multiple times of the day. And I've actually just hooked up my irrigation. You can see here with the spot spitters I've set up a drip irrigation. And I'm now on a timer watering them twice a day. Uh, they're getting about what I should use is the, the um, 3.6 gallons, 3.6 gallons per hour um, emitter. And so what that ends up working out to is that every five gallons of soil, you need a 3.6 gallon per hour emitter, and you need about um, 10 minutes of watering every day. I do it at five minute intervals at the hottest times of the day, usually around noon or 12, like one o'clock, and then once again around four or five o'clock um, just to keep the soil cooler, but also to give them enough water, you need about 10 minutes, as I said, per five gallons of soil. So you do the math of the 3.6 
gallon per hour emitter. And you can just take that five gallon number, whatever it comes out to, and then obviously increase that if you have uh, a larger container or obviously if you have a, uh, an in-ground tree. So that's water. Uh, again, it's the on or off switch of growth. We need to be feeding them, of course, and the more we water them, especially in these containers, the more we have to feed them. In the ground, you know, cover your basic micronutrients, uh, get a soil test and figure out exactly what you need. But in general, figs need a bit more silica, calcium, magnesium, sulfur. Uh, I think they need a lot of potassium personally. And I like a good balanced NPK ratio though of like 10, uh, 5, 10 or 20, 10, 20. Uh, you can also just go with a straight 10, 10, 10. In the containers, a lot of leaching is happening. I'm, I'm seeing uh, in my container fig trees because I'm watering them so much. And a lot of that nutrient is just leaching right out of the bottom of the pot. Some of the other things we may want to consider if we're going the containers here in the, in the greenhouse. Again, is if it gets too warm, don't use fabric pots. Also don't use black pots. So basically get yourself a white plastic pot or something like that. Um, again, to keep that soil temperature maintained at that 78 degrees Fahrenheit. I am finding that the fabric pots, especially the more mature the trees get, the more they dry out, the quicker they dry out, I should say. And uh, obviously the quicker they dry out in this environment, the worse that is. Right now I want them to grow. I don't want them to dry out and stop growing. I want them to grow as much as possible. So plastic's the way to go. Now I, I don't really have any white plastic pots. I just have these black ones here because this is really what you need in the Philadelphia area and places north. But for most of you guys in the south, I probably wouldn't be growing in plastic, black plastic pots. I would try to grow in another color, something lighter. Um, and that's for people definitely in California, like Southern California, Arizona, Texas, Florida, uh, and places like that. You know, this black plastic, again, is it's going to be real hard to keep the temperatures cooler in these pots. Um, and then kind of lastly, uh, let's talk about light. And so one of the things I've noticed this year with the light, and I'll show you guys the trees. I know I've been standing here the whole video, but uh, I will show you guys the trees and that there's a pretty darn big difference this season because this greenhouse, this commercial greenhouse area that we have here is in full sun. Well, it's in sunlight all day. Now at home, where I normally grow my fig trees, I don't get all that much light. And so because I don't have access to a lot of light, I'm noticing that my trees in here, this is the first season they've been in here, they are behaving quite differently. And because they, are, have, they have access to all of this extra light, what's happening is, is that the trees are branching out in a lot of different places. And they are activating essentially a lot of buds this is a tree here that just woke up and you can see how many buds on this branch are actually starting to grow. It's quite a lot. And so if I count them, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's about 12 buds, including the apical bud that are actually leafing out. And this is great because the more buds we have that actually receive the right amount of light to set the fruit buds as they grow, they need a specific amount of intensity and duration of light to set the fruit buds. But if we can have more of those that actually receive that light, we typically, and just in a general statement, will actually ripen and produce more fruits on our tree. So we wanna have a lot of these fruit buds. We wanna have a lot of this new growth. The problem is some of it may actually get shaded and not actually produce. But if we put our branches here a bit on a horizontal angle like this, that opens up this branch to allow more light into this section of the tree. Once there's more light in here, and also at the top for sure, but once there's more light in here, these buds down here that are also trying to bud and grow will activate as well. And so now we're covering a larger surface area of sunlight and we're allowing our trees to actually uh, basically you know, maximize this photosynthesis and produce more fruits that way. More fruiting branches, more fruits. So this is sort of naturally already happening without any help that I'm giving them in terms of staking 
and limb bending here. You can see I've used some of these devices here to actually bend the limbs to get more of that, that branch on an angle to activate some of these branches down here. And you can see this branch here is already doing that, actually. It's on an angle. There's a branch right back here, a branch there, a branch there, and so on all the way up the branch. And so now we have just a ton more of these branches that again are forming more fruits, more branches, more fruits. And then um, we are maximizing that sunlight. And this space in general, because we already just have more sunlight than I normally do, I am seeing an increase in these branches as soon as they wake up from dormancy. So just in a sense, you could ascertain from what I just said that the more sunlight you have, the more fruiting branches you can particularly have in a given space, and therefore you can produce more fruits. So you can also affect the sunlight though that your tree receives by doing what I just mentioned, by staking the branches and that every single fig tree in here, I have not optimized it just yet. I haven't found the time, but every fig tree in here and every fig tree I grow and every single fruit tree I grow, not even just the figs, is staked and is bent with their limbs and is trained in a proper way to maximize the amount of sunlight that every single one of those plants receives because I know of the amazing positive benefits that that's gonna to give to our trees. Not only are they gonna produce more fruits, they're gonna produce at an earlier date, and they're gonna produce typically a higher quality fruit. So the sunlight, every, just every aspect is, uh, is critical. And so in a greenhouse setting like this, and just in a greenhouse in general, we have diffused light. We don't have as much light to begin with, but we do have more light in this particular spot because again, where I'm at at my current location in Philadelphia at home, I'm not really getting the amount of sunlight that this particular spot receives. So it's been a nice learning experience. Well, really a, a reaffirming what I've already sort of learned with the sunlight and seeing it here full force, it's a pretty obvious difference. The other thing is that once we have more of this, other thing that we've learned, by the way, once we have more of these branches, we have more leaves, right? The more leaves we have, the more water we need because the more of that transpiration is occurring. And so numbers that I've said in the past in terms of watering is very different based on how warm it is and also based on how many leaves are on our tree. And so if you have a lot of leaves, you're going to have to water a lot more. And so that's just obviously a nice little difference right there. And just across the board here, guys, I would say those are probably the most obvious differences that we've learned so far. Um, and then those are really everything that you probably need to know about growing figs in a greenhouse. Um, I think you guys are pretty much set. And I thank you everybody here for watching. Please, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and check out the blog, figboss.com. I will have a comprehensive guide to go along with this video, and we'll see you guys for the next one.